Okay, 9-7 has probably the most of the entire um, uh, the entire chapter or you know the entire unit um but a lot of it's built on stuff we've already done and you're describing the inside of a restaurant or describing the kind of food that they have so there are really um a couple of easy ways of looking at this memorization of the vocab is the hardest thing and i'm not going to go too crazy since we really haven't practiced this uh in the classroom or in conversation yet. So let me jump to here. Okay. Um, I've went through and I, there were so many gifts in this that it was slowing it down. So I pulled them out. I put the videos in, I have a separate one for the gifts and the vocab. Um, in addition to the, the TPT one, um, or the, the one that I normally do with, uh, different people signing the vocab. So I, I'm including the ones, I'm going to do a separate thing with the ones directly from the book. Um, right, okay, so the goals of the chapter is we're having a dialogue about, uh, about a restaurant. So the first thing we're going to do is think about, have you been to a restaurant or this type of restaurant, either the name or uh, what kind of restaurant, uh, asking what it looks like. What kind of food do they have? And describing the food, you know, listing some of them. And then is it good, is it ex expensive? Asking opinions and giving opinions. So the sign for restaurant we've already learned is this. So it's an R at the corners of the mouth. Sign for napkin is like this too. If you remember cafeteria, wait, what are you doing? No, 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 no. Here, you do this, hold on. Have to feed him. Okay, so a couple of vocab things from this one. Um, restaurant, we got. Um, have you been to? We've done this in past ones. Remember we used finish touch? Finish touch or finish eat there? So either one of those words, or you can go finish go or go finish. Um, but it's less specific. It's kind of a generic thing where we would we would touch touch we would use touch. Even touch eat there. Um, so what does it look like? We've done it. Previous units look like. What does something look like? Look. So the book sometimes writes it as face same as look like because. If you see look look like people will sometimes go look like or look like but it's look like appear like um what food and kind is two k's that do this kind kind um i don't know exactly why to how to describe why we sign it that way it's kind of like the sign for all kind kind of food have kind of food make kind of food serve offer um and then we'll go through the vocab is a lot there, a big chunk of the vocab is different kinds of foods um is it good good right eyebrows up good expensive remember you're asking yes no questions for these is it good yes or no is it expensive yes or no you may get more information you're, you're fishing for it but Or uh, God, so much spam. Uh, la, la, la. Okay. So the next is that finish touch. Finish touch you. You finish touch you. Um, look like what? And then we'll get into classifiers describing we're literally going to paint the restaurant in this in our signing space in front of us so it could be sorry okay dog not barking um so I, literally what i want you to think about is that you're going to be it, painting the the landscape using your signing space as the restaurant right so here are the walls 
and you're going to be describing what's on them. You're going to use your hands to show the shapes. Um, so it'll be a really necessary skill to close your eyes and picture. If you are standing there, what does the room look like? Where are things laid out? That's a skill you have to develop with ASL. Um, uh, conversely, it's also a skill that ASL will help develop. So they go in hand in hand. If you don't have it, the more you practice with it, the better you'll, the better, excuse me, what? Hi. the better you'll get at it. Um, and these are what we call classifiers. I've probably mentioned them a number of times, but um, you're going to be using your hands, not just vocab, but to illustrate or even to sculpt what's in the space. Um, to, to the extent of you'll even be showing the direction of lighting. And that's what we call elemental classifiers, but I'll get into that. Um, so, so this is a huge vocab list. Um, and they're tiny on here, which I should probably change that. Okay, so I, I made them 24 points, so hopefully they're easier to see. Um, and I have a dog who's about to be run over here. You have to come. No, 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 no. You can come over there. Okay. <laughs> Can't move my chair back. Okay. Um, so hopefully you can see them on here. Uh, you've got the PowerPoint in here. So look forward to. Oh, look forward to. So looking forward, literally looking forward to. Um, outside. If you just do this, like, what does it look like, right? Look like, what does the outside look like? Um, we've done a lot of these pieces. Now we're putting it front door. We've talked about, I think we described a house front door. Um, and then glass. And again, that'll be in, in the, uh, in the vocab. The way these are grouped is based on some of the videos that are in it. So I, I've seen some, uh, in California, they sign glass, which is sort of like you're tapping your tooth glass. So like a glass panel or just glass, glass. Um, a bar, bar is this, and then you could do a counter, counter, you know. Um, stools, like um, light, we've done this for light, remember. So you could do light, shining light from above, from below, and this is the that element classifier of the light shining in the different directions, right? Um, wall, wherever the wall is, and stone. It's like work, but it's the back of the hand, stone. Um, we'll talk about uh, um, tables. Basically, we can use the flat of the hand for the most part as tables, however they're set up. And then kind, we got back to kind. Then we get into um, ethnicities or different uh, cultural references for food. And we'll, we'll get through there. They're in the slideshow. I don't need, necessarily have to go through it right now. Um, bar, expensive, uh, reasonable, cheap. So we've got a couple of different things uh, talking about opinions. The one that I want to explain is this, champ. And champ means the best. It's goat, right? Greatest of all time. Um, we'll use that in terms of a restaurant. If it's, oh, oh, that place is the best. Pfft, champ. Um, lousy, no good. Vomit, detest, yuck, gag. Uh, counters. I already said that before. Like where, how are things set up in the restaurant? Um whether they're round tables or flat tables, you know, or square tables versus, you know, round, round, square. This, it seems like, it seems like, like square table. We generally use this for square just because we assume that rectangle is more of a square. Um, hibachi, where we do the table. And in the center is they cook ever been to like uh, one of those hibachi restaurants. We're going to talk about Benihana in a bit. So we're going to talk about chairs in different setups, um, different foods, 
uh, la 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 drinks, stuff like that, whether it's got variety or not. And then the descriptions of the stuff on the wall and stuff that wall, the wall or uh, the floors or whatever could be made of. And the last one is interesting, interesting, and it's like with both hands. Interesting. I like that. Interesting. That's the easiest way I remember is like, oh, I really like that. That's interesting. Uh, there's a British TV show called QI, quite interesting, um, where you get points not for being right. You get points for being interesting. So you may have you may not have the right answer to something, but you might have something related to it that's really interesting, and you get major points for that. Okay, so I have set this up so that it pairs up the vocab with the uh, the prompt from the book and the PowerPoint. So um, these had been gifts. It was slowing it down, so I've replaced it with the videos. Hopefully that works better. So Chinese. Um, it's just as easy to go through there. I could waste a lot of time doing it here when you've got it in your textbook, in the DVD. Um, and it also, I've got the vocab number right there so you can see it. So uh, I try to do it in groups as well. So the opinions about prices, uh, there's expensive and it's like money hot, like you burnt your fingers, expensive. Okay. Then we've got somewhat like kind of half, half, it, it, some people will do some, eh, it's kind of expensive. This is a little bit more of a California sign or like, oh, that's kind of expensive. Reasonable, <laughs> reasonable, reasonable, reasonable. Um, and cheap, cheap. And then we didn't do free, free, cost, nothing. So this is also a sign for cost. Um, so someone may be cost what expensive cost. So it's another way you may see it. Now, this is up to you to go back to those same things that we just listed. And what do you think? $200 for a menu for two to get all those things. Would it be expensive? Reasonable? I suppose it depends on what you're, what you're used to. I tend toward the DoorDash, yay, deliver, right? Anyway, so just what for you with those, would uh, would you think about those? Cheap, right? 10 bucks for all that stuff. Now we get to the question of, but would it be good? Um, and another reason why I, I don't, I'm not going to put the book's opinions on here is because times change and San Francisco has a different economy than Kent, Ohio. So what we think would be expensive here might just be, well, you know, that's um, San Francisco prices, especially with Silicon Valley so close to San Francisco. Their economy is not great for college students. Um, so opinions about the food. There are a few more in here, and they've got fewer options on the star chart. But um, here's where we see champ and good, delicious. Um, I, they're doing delicious and I've only seen this for like lucky. So it's probably a West coast sign. Most of the time we just rub our finger or our middle finger and our thumb together and pull it away from the mouth. Mm, delicious. Mwah, delish. Then there's okay. Right. Uh, oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Get down to lousy and, and. Well, actually, this is right in between. They didn't give a fifth option in the middle. So uh, it's okay. Uh, although I suppose if you're saying it's just okay, it's probably further towards not good than good. And here there's a whole bunch of them, four of them for lousy. Lousy, vomit, <laughs> gag me. And they, they do terrible or terrible and most of the time I see it in, in, in the Cleveland area. Ugh, terrible, Ugh, awful, awful, awful. Now we're going to get to three specific restaurants, uh, very different styles and talk about their food, talk about their ambiance and talk about, uh, expense and talk about what it's like when you walk in, 
what is the restaurant like? So this is a big kind of meaty section of it. Um, we, you probably did this if you ever went to Benihana and someone said, I've never been to one. What was it like? And you go through saying, well, here's what it looks, here's what kind of food they serve. Here's what it looks like when you walk in. You can either do the tables or you could do the hibachi and describe what the two tables are like any regular, like Japanese, Chinese restaurant. Uh, but the hibachis, it's a kind of cool thing. Okay. So, um, in e for each one of these, the, the signer is going to describe the inside of the restaurant. So it should be clear. And because they're using classifiers to paint the inside of what it looks like and what happened and show activity, what it, um, what the, what the restaurant is like on the inside. Um, it should be much easier and there isn't a lot of vocab to freak you out. It still will mean you'll probably need to watch it a couple times and you'll probably want to slow it down if you have that option, um, just to make sure you're getting everything. But the thing I've recommended, um, it's sort of heretical to say, practice voicing with it. Once you know what they're signing, say what the English would be. So they got these tables and they got chairs all the way around it. But in the middle of the table is this little, cooking thing and that that's where they do all the cooking and they flip their knives and stuff like that if you can say in your words what the english would be to what they're signing even if it doesn't match up completely you'll start to really latch into oh this is how they're setting it up this is how they anticipate this thought this is how they they you know everything builds to this point um that stuff really helps get your that language in here because it's really hard to internalize that and and feel it. You've got to feel the ASL in here. The ASL isn't happening up here. It's not even happening here. It's happening here first. Because you've got to be like, oh, i got to tell this story. Okay, I sound over dramatic. But. So we got ben Benihana. She described it, what the layout is. Um, and now we can look at, like, how else could you describe tables? So here we've got tables laid out. The heck was that? I may ask you. I may ask you to lean in if you come through, though. Dogs outside. Wife's home. Should probably come through. Okay, so we're talking about tables. Now I've got example videos from their vocab review that approximate these pictures. Um, I, I'm, this makes me think that they took the, they did the videos before they had the pictures and then they're kind of like, oh, well, this is kind of like that. I kind of wish they'd done it in the opposite direction, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. So just go through and look at how they've laid them out. Um, we use these for chairs. So we've got table and chairs. Boom, 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 boom. boom. You can have, you know, chairs on three sides. However, chairs along the sides, on two sides, we've got a bar, right? On this side, it's on our left-hand side. And I included bar because we hadn't, uh, so far in the slideshow, we hadn't really talked about that. That's why I covered it with vocab. Now these, table with two chairs or tape with two chairs. So table, 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 chair, 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 chair. Um, so again, it's like you're doing a little dollhouse diorama, but using your hands to set it up. So it's going to take some playing around with, um, but just kind of fool around, paint the picture. As long as you can see it in your head and you can, and everything moves around, like you don't have the table is here, but the chairs are over here or the chairs are doing this. You, you have to like see it and let your hands be what you see. Right. Kind of looks like my wedding reception. Anyway, so then again, we're going to talk about what foods they have at Benihana. And I've put in the vocab for them, or at least the closest approximation. Um, chicken. Now, this is the generic sign for bird, the beak. But it also applies for applies to the term chicken. So as you've noticed, there's usually one sign 
that is the general heading. And then that same sign can be used for one of the things in it. So this is the general sign for alcohol. It's also the sign for whiskey, as, as opposed to beer and wine, which we'll get to. Um, so you'll oftentimes find the maybe the converse is true, that the vocab for one of the key things in that category is also the sign for the entire category. That may be a better way of saying it. So we've got chicken, fish. I'm guessing that's fish. Um, there is no sign in the vocab for sake. She talks about it in there. So you have to finger spell. I don't know why they didn't create a video for that. But what are they? No, you can't have any sake. Thank you. Okay. I could use some sake. Anyway, rice, finger spelled. Uh, meat. Now, again, so meat and steak. This is the sign for meat, but this is also the sign for steak. So again, the one, one sign represents the entire category. Shrimp, shrimp. And sometimes you see shrimp going forward. Sometimes you see it going back if it's moving. Or this. Um, sushi. It's kind of hard to see. It's similar to hot dog, which we'll see in a bit. They didn't do a vocab for that either, but maybe we did that already. Hot dog. You'll also see this. This was the first sign I learned for hot dog, but it's technically actually the sign for sausage because of, you know, how it's, it, it's casing and then they twist it off. So you've got them all connected. So sausage can be hot dog. This is usually hot dog in a bun. And if we do this, it's sushi. Because if you watch them make sushi, they make the thing, the ball of rice, and then they put the stuff on top, the fish on top, or the tamago, or uh, uh, whatever it is, unagi, whatever you're eating. So that's the sign for sushi. Again, it's San Francisco, where we don't really get sushi a lot in Ohio because we're landlocked, and it's probably not safe to eat fish right from the Cuyahoga River. Um, did you want to come in? Hello. I'm babysitting. Anyway. All right. So the second restaurant is the Hard Rock Cafe. Again, fingerspell Hard Rock, just like you had to, would have to fingerspell Benny Hanna. He's going to describe the environment. Now, um, there's vocab in the section where we talk about the walls and uh, stuff hanging on the walls. But again, we got, imagine your signing space is the room, is the restaurant. So there's the bat, the far wall and the side walls. And technically there's one behind you too. But most often, you know, unless you have to describe it, you could turn and say, this wall too. Um, maybe it's all glass to the parking lot. Um, so again, you could say, and then specifically this wall has this, this wall has this, and this wall has this. Um, so Kylo Ren is going to do the walls themselves and you can do placement of things on there. You can have flat like pictures and posters. You could have picture frames like, or uh, uh, albums, you know, gold and platinum albums on the wall. Cause they're the, the square flat shape, right? Or um, you could have guitars since they're oblong. You could have circular records on the wall. So you can do all that. Okay, crazy. People keep coming and going. It's like Oz. Um, so literally, if you picture that you set up these walls, then you just hang things on the walls like they're there. If they're randomly placed, if they're in rows, put a reference point. If they're just haphazardly put up or they're, you know, and again, do each wall. Don't just go because then it's curved. I don't know. So it takes some it takes some playing. And the more you watch people do it, then again, you're not gonna be describing rooms all that often. Except for ASL three and four. Then you will. But I digress. Um I, I copied these because I was thinking about uh, putting in little snippets of videos. I haven't cut them yet, but I'd, I want to get this up. So now types of materials, types of walls, and they talk about stucco, which 
like I have in this house, but this is like the first house I've had in Ohio that has anything like stucco. Um, so wood, you're sawing. So if you just go through and look at each one, metal, glass, uh, stone, and these, again, right out of your book, same illustrations, stucco, why did I include it in here? I don't know. Brick, and it's red brick, could be yellow brick. I love the yellow brick road. Um, cement. And then we get to foods. So we've described all the different materials that could be in the uh, in the restaurant. Now let's talk about, oh, this is going to make me hungry. Okay. So not all of these have, actually I think uh, the last one is the only one that doesn't have one. And you'd have to finger spell it. It's fajita. Why bother if there's not a sign for it? If you're not going to include it in the videos, why? Anyway, so pasta. So again, like we were talking about, this is the sign for pasta. It's the sign for spaghetti. So we use this for pasta and for spaghetti. The specific represents the whole. Salad like you're tossing a salad, um, hamburger, hamburger, cheese, burger. So cheese, say cheese. Um, alcohol drinks, alcohol drink, wine. I'm doing these ones cause they're important. It's called therapy. It's called self care. Um, and again, steak or meat. Sandwich. So here's the bread, and here's the stuff in the middle. Sandwich. It's usually signed up by the mouth. Dessert, or sometimes you'll see dessert, dessert, or dessert. And we could get into specifics of cake and that, but we'll just go dessert. Beer. Beer is like the sign for brown, but it repeats. And it doesn't come from the hairline. Brown comes from the hair down to the chin. And we're just doing barbecue, BBQ, BBQ, BB King, BBQ, BB King's barbecue in Memphis. I think it's the best dry rub I've ever had. Anyway, French fries, French fries. It's also the sign for 99. And it's also a sign for furniture. It's slightly different from the sign for pepper. French fry, French fry. Good. And then fajita that you're going to have to finger spell. Why it's there, I don't know. But it's there just to annoy me. And last but not least, Chuck E. Cheese. That restaurant that little kids love, and at some point you go, what the hell was I thinking? What the hell were my parents thinking of feeding, taking me to this place with the really creepy dolls? Anyway, Charles Entertainment Cheese. That's what the E stands for. So she's going to describe the environment. And one of the things in this that we're going to talk about is lighting because they specifically talk about the lighting in Chuck E. Cheese and how for the stage show, there's lights that shine from this wall onto the stage. Lights could be lights from under the table shining up. Um, so there's all these different, if it's flashing, if it's in a circle and there's like circle lights flashing, that kind of thing. So you could do anything you want. That's that element classifier of which way the lights are shining. And there's a couple of gifts still in this. I didn't cut these out because they seemed really short. And if I eliminated all the other ones, this wasn't too bad. Um, so, again, we're going to review all the foods. Salad, we did. Pizza, finger spelled. Well, there's some other regional signs. Pizza. Pizza, like you're holding the crust. Pizza, this is more of a New York style because it's huge and, you know, it's a quarter of a pizza and you got to hold it. Um, there's a rat carrying pizza. Um, pizza. And 
They fingerspell P I Z A. Okay, those San Franciscans, fine, whatever. But in Ohio, we tend to sign it with the double Z A. Za, za, pizza, za. Okay, so za or pizza or pizza. I just did sandwich for sub. I believe that's what they want. Although you could do sandwich, like long, thin sandwich. Hot dog. And again, we will have a video for it, but I've just described it, so you got it. Um, this is dessert, but it's also ice cream. So just, even though it's not served in a cone, that's ice cream. Drink, pop. And it comes from how you used to have to use a can opener to... So pop, pop. So you pop it, it starts to overflow, and you try to stem the flow. And then we go back to the dialogue and um, how would you describe what the restaurant looks like. So we go back to that first thing. Um, don't You don't have to go crazy. Um, I want you to think about for a homework, I'm going to have you, or for one of the assessments, you're going to describe a restaurant. So... Those are the two things we've got coming up uh, to end the semester. And I'm trying, I want to, I'm going to scale back. Actually, I'm not going to give you as much work as is on the schedule because we don't have that much time. Um, and every other class, I'm sure, is dumping stuff on you. But I want you to think about the restaurants, your favorite restaurant, and pick a simple one. Don't pick like Buco de Beppo where every room has a different theme and your favorite room is the Pope room because there's a Pope's head on a turntable in the middle. Because that's going to be pretty awful to describe unless you're describing the kitchen table. But there's a lot going on in the kitchen. If you don't know Buco de Beppo, family style Italian, and they got rooms that are themed and their kitchen table, if they still have it, they may have had to eliminate it. But their kitchen table was basically a four top, four top or six top in the kitchen. And they would bring you things to sample. It was amazing. Anyway, so anyway, vocab. Now, there are descriptions of conversations and that goes go through this example conversation. And I just want you to watch to see how he uses all this stuff. I included more information about the classifiers. I just want you to understand how they function. In ASL 3 and 4 is when we really dive into them, but we want you to have the taste of them. And you're about to have the summer off, so I'd rather have stuff for you to think about um, because memorizing vocab is really hard out of context. But understanding the concepts of stuff uh, will help unlock some more advanced videos that you may be seeing over the summer. Um, there are three different types of, descript of classifiers that we've used in this restaurant section. The big ones are descriptive classifiers when we like sculpt things, give shapes, you know, guitars, boom, 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 boom. Uh, those are descriptive. Loc locative ones show location, relative location. So if there are table, 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 we're setting up here's a table here and not far away and regularly spaced or, boom, 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 or the chairs are in circles around. Anything that shows a relationship in space, uh, it, is a locative classifier. It could be two people standing next to each other. And then the element classifiers, the big ones we've been using are rays of light. Um, if they had a fog machine at Chuck E. Cheese and the fog would come out, you could that would be an element classifier too. Um, if you go to one of those four-dimensional uh, amusement park rides where they like spray water on you and, and stuff like that, um, Jungle, what was the Jungle Cruise or Jungle, the one, that, whatever it is, at uh, Disney, where pss, there's water in the air and stuff like that. So there's that. So there's some examples of stuff as they're talking, talking about listing. This one really, they just packed in a bunch of stuff of what, what are other things. So then Derek is going to describe a restaurant, and these are the homework uh, questions. So just answer them. And the answers are in your book. And then we come back to the vocab. And that's this unit, 9-7. It's pretty hefty, but really the bulk of it is vocab and just getting used to how do you describe the inside of a restaurant? How would, and if it means doing it in English first and then saying, oh, okay, well, how would I sign that? 
It's not hard, but it can seem imposing when you first approach it.